So, hello. How is everybody? Have you all come from far? Are you all Kent people? Yeah. Okay, what time did you get up this morning? Early? Really early? How much? Six? Jesus, that's early. Okay, my name's Mark. I run a business called Red Sprout. Um, anybody heard of Red Sprout? Yes, thank you. All the tribe at the back, love it. Um, so Red Sprout is a marketing recruitment business. So we work with um, lots and lots of companies across Kent, London, and that's expanding across the UK as well. And we help uh, lots of people trying to find their dream jobs. So it's a really good, fun job. Um, you guys are what, 17? Eight, uh, hands up for 17? Most, uh, 18? Oh, mix, okay. So this was, my click, this was me in, uh, when I was 17. It was 1984, can you believe that? 19, I can't believe, 1984. Sophie, when were you 17? 2017, yeah. Okay, um, this, so this was, that wasn't me, obviously. That's a very young Brad Pitt. Um, I wish I looked like that at the age of 17. Um, this was, I wasn't lucky enough to have this, but this was the technology that we had in 1984. Um, I didn't have one of these. You had to be a proper geek and, uh, and a bit of an Apple follower as well. I don't know if you've seen the film. Have you seen the film about Steve Jobs and all that stuff? So this was, um, this was I think, Apple II, which was um, their, one of their big machines. Anyway, that's what we had to play with. Um, nothing, nothing. What a difference it is now compared to the tech that we've got these days. This was what it was back in 1984. And, and then, of course, social media was a very, very different picture back in my day as well. Um, it looked a little bit like that, actually, because it just didn't exist. I mean, we, back in the day, we had a landline phone. No one's going to remember this. I'm talking to an audience of people who just have no understanding of what I'm talking about. Who at the back remembers the phones that you had to put your finger in and... Yeah, there we go. So... I mean, no mobile phones, no, I mean, almost no technology. We had no way of connecting with each other. If you wanted to go out with a girl, you had to ring up their landline and inevitably their dad would pick up. It was the most embarrassing call you've ever made in your life, saying, oh my God, is she there? And then if she ghosted you, which is a new phrase, but if she ghosted you, I mean, that was seriously embarrassing as well. So social media didn't exist. And then suddenly these guys started to come along. Um, now, no one in the room is going to remember this unless you're probably part of the back crowd. Anyone for Friends Reunited? Yes. Friends Reunited, I used to work for these guys, actually. Um, they were probably the U one of the UK's biggest, first biggest social media channels. Um, and it actually came about from uh, the wife of the founder of this company, went on to Radio 2, Steve Wright's show, started to talk about it. And from there, it just went absolutely massive. And it was basically what it says on the tin. It was a way of connecting old friends together. Um, and uh, it was crazy, absolutely. The technology was awful. The website was really clunky. But, and then we started to get serious. So we then started to get the Facebooks of the world, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Snapchat, and then uh, LinkedIn, which is what I want to talk to you about today. So, <coughs> excuse me. So hands in the room. Um, who's on Facebook? I'm really surprised. I'm still surprised by that. You know, I thought it was just my age group that were now on Facebook. Um, Twitter? Oh, OK. Uh, every hand in the room, I'm guessing, for the next one. Instagram? Yeah. Snapchat? Okay, and the really important one. Who's on LinkedIn? Oh, my God, I love you all. This is brilliant. Oh, now, okay, have you got LinkedIn on your phone? Have you? Okay, I wasn't going to do this. I'm going to do this now. So, hold on, I need my glasses for this. If you go on to your... Those of you that are on LinkedIn, open up the app on your phone. And at the bottom you've got this thing called My Network. So if you click My Network, have you got it? And then there should be a big blue button at the bottom, at the bottom right hand side of the screen. So if you're on your not My Network bit, there's a big blue button at the bottom. Everyone got it? Can you see a big blue button? Hit, yeah, hit that big blue button. And then it should say, Find Nearby. So if you go to, if you go to Network, that's it, and then... Oh. Oh, no, no, that's messaging. So you want to go to that one. Oh, oh yeah, hit the phone. So some, some, on some of them, it's at the top of the phone. There should be a thing called Find Nearby. If you click that, watch what happens. See what's happening now on my phone. All the people that are in the room that are clicking on that app and, and clicking onto the Find Nearby are now appearing on here 
and I'm starting to... Sophie Clark, you're everywhere you are. Um, so, oh, Neil Walker. So everybody is now starting to appear on, <laughs> on, uh, on my find nearby. And this is a, an amazing... I'm doing this tomorrow, another talk I'm doing. Um, if you want to connect with a load of people at a networking event, the best way to do is get the speaker to actually start doing this find nearby, and then you can literally go connect, 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 connect on LinkedIn. So, top tip. Anyway. That was just an aside, I wasn't going to do that. Um, so, uh, I want to talk about LinkedIn. Um, let me clicker. And your teachers are going to tell you that this is probably the most important part of your life and that education is the absolute key and that you've got to study hard, you've got to get the right results. And I totally agree. But there is more to it than that. Because I'm afraid in this world it is now as much about who you know as it is about what you know. And if you go through education and you go through university and you're not starting to work, and I would strongly recommend that at your age now, this is the time to start doing this. Start connecting with some really influential people in the industries in which you want to work. So I want to talk to you about LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is the route to be able to do that for you. So we speak to probably tons and tons of people every day. A lot of them are students that are coming out of university, and they're in their third year, and uh, they think naively that they've just got their amazing first and they've worked really hard on it, and that they are going to walk out of that university and they're going to land their dream job. They're wrong. And please do not be as naive as this. They are wrong. Because you, when you walk out of university, are going to be one of thousands and thousands of other people that have walked out of that university or other universities with similar degrees. And you are now in a race to get that job. Because you'll be going to assessment days and you'll have to be selling the hell out of yourself to make sure that you are the one that they hire. It is super, super competitive. And when, you're, when your teachers tell you this, please, please, they are not bullshitting you, honestly. They are absolutely telling you the truth. This is true. It is hard work, even with the most amazing degree in the world, to go and land that job. You've got a massive opportunity today especially those that are on LinkedIn now. A massive, massive opportunity because there are some serious industry players here today. You've got some amazing speakers, some amazing people that have taken their time out of their diaries, as Jackie Becky was saying earlier, to come and talk to you. And you have an opportunity to connect with these guys. And I, I've got two kids. My son is 23, my daughter is 20. So I kind of, they're a little bit older than you guys, but I kind of relate. It's difficult, it's hard going up and just talking to people when you've never met them before. This opportunity on LinkedIn actually plays beautifully to, to where you guys are because there is absolutely no harm in connecting with these people on LinkedIn. You'll have seen them today, they've been here today, you've got something in common because you've been to the same event. I've put some of them up there, I, can't, I don't even know who some of them are. I know, I know it's you, Becky, and I know that's Amy. But anyway, so you've got these, these opportunities today. Find out who the hell is here, get onto LinkedIn and send them a connection request and say this is a brilliant day. We'll, we'll cover that in a second. So it looks something like this. When you've got LinkedIn, you can connect with people, but you can send them a message request um, that, that is basically asking them whether they want to connect with you. And so you can, you can say something like this to grumpy old Mark here. Um, you came to, I, I, do you know what, I noticed that I put too many Gs in there. Um, I came to, you came to Amazing Girls Grammar to talk at Aspiration Digital. I really enjoyed your talk. It was the best of the day. Of course it was the best of the day. Um, and can we connect? Can we, so something like that. You've got two options when you go onto LinkedIn. You've got a connect with me, which is just a basic button that just says connect, it's horrible, don't do it. Or you've got this option to write a personal message and always do that and try and relate why you want to connect with that person uh, in that personal message. And then you could do the same thing to Becky. I'm a student at Mason Girls Grammar and I'm looking to go into digital marketing when I finish my studies. I wonder if you can give me some advice on how to get into that industry. So it doesn't have to be just connect. It can be actually saying, look, help me. I'm a student. Uh, you, you're in a really influential position, you run a business, how can you help me? What do I need to do to be able to get into your company or companies like yours when I graduate, when I finish my education? And the reality is that they're all going to say yes. And I'll tell you why they're all going to say yes. You're not going to get refused. If you're sending connection requests, you're going to get the answer yes. And the reason is 
that you are the future in a market that is bloody tough because the skills and the experience are in very, very, very short supply. We work very, very closely with Becky and Paul at Reflect Digital, and they are always looking for really good, strong search engine optimization people. They don't exist. So when you send a connection request through to Becky saying, I want to be part of your network, I'm a student, I'm learning, I want to get into your industry, she's going to be clamoring to hit that yes button and clamoring to get you into her office because she thinks, like she did with Sophie, in two, three, four, five years, this person could be working for me. And actually, that means that my business is going to go through the roof because I've got this pipeline of really good people that are coming on stream. So the answer is going to be yes. Please do not be embarrassed and just connect with a load of people. And then do more than that. Find more Beckys. Find everybody who runs an agency. Dan's here from Wonderful. He runs an agency in Kent. Find Dan on LinkedIn. Connect with Dan. Say, I'm a student. I'm really looking to go into your industry. Can I come and see you? Can I come and have a look around your offices? Can you tell me a little bit more about what this industry is all about? The answer from Dan is going to be yes, because he thinks you're going to be one of his employees in the future. This is really strong, and it's really powerful stuff, and I really want you to, to understand why they're going to say yes. Do not be embarrassed about this. So that's really my number one rule with LinkedIn, especially where you guys are at the moment. Get on, set your profile up, no drinking photos, but something nice and professional. I mean, I get away with it, but some, some nice professional photo um, on your profile. Put the fact that you're a student, what you're looking to do, to tell your story on your LinkedIn profile. So that's, that's rule number one, is start connecting with people. You can the search functionality on there, and you can go and search for managers and directors who run marketing agencies in Maidstone or in Kent, and you get this whole list and just go through and send them all an individual message. This is, this is preparing for your future, regardless of where you want to go in your education beyond school. The second rule is this, because you don't have to post anything yet on LinkedIn, nothing at all. We'll come to that bit in a minute. The second, and this is actually probably the most important part, once you've connected with people like Becky and Dan and everybody else, they're posting stuff. In fact, we've missed an opportunity already because this is a post that Becky put out a few days ago that was talking about exactly what I'm saying. The fact that there is a digital skills gap. And therefore, she's putting on Aspiration Digital and talking to all you guys today about what digital looks like and what the future looks like. There is a massive opportunity. So that had some engagement on it. And if you were on LinkedIn, you could have just started engaging with that post in the news feed and said something like this. Hi, Becky, really looking forward to this. So you've got some great speakers coming up. You're engaging. You're getting involved in that conversation. You could have, I post up a ton of video, a ton of video. I'll share one with you a little bit later. Uh, they're usually rather stupid, but, um, and this is the other thing about LinkedIn. It's not stuffy, it's not boring, it's not necessarily corporate, it's really changing. You can actually have some real fun on LinkedIn as well. Um, so you can, I was, I've bought myself a green, does anyone play with green screens? They're really good fun. <laughs> this video is really stupid. I just bought a green screen and thought I'm going to have a mess around with this thing, and, and I ended up in, um, I don't know when it goes, where does it go? I ended up in New York and Paris. I just started messing around. Then I just thought I'd post it on LinkedIn. There you go, I'm in Paris. And I think I ended up in, yeah, there we are. I'm in New York. Then I was in Casey Neistat's office. That's probably copyright, but hey. Um, and so I just started messing around. But you could have engaged with that post and said, you're an idiot. Just anything, just get involved and engage and start having a conversation with the people that you're starting to connect with. And you can get away with calling me an idiot. I really don't mind. I get called that all the time. Um, and the real, oh. See, it still missed that picture. I don't know what we were trying to mess around with this earlier. This is the thing. When you start engaging with people's content on LinkedIn, unsurprisingly, LinkedIn thinks you're friends because you're starting to talk to each other. You're having conversations with each other. And I've already given away that one. So, does that, so now, the people in the office said that this, would, this wouldn't fly. Does, that, does everyone get that? Yeah, fine. See, I said, I said that. I said you'd get that. Um, and... So once you start engaging and LinkedIn thinks that you guys are friends because you're talking to each other on LinkedIn, when you start posting, guess what happens? LinkedIn thinks to itself, these guys are friends. So your post, when you start posting, is going to go straight to the top of their news feed. It's a priority piece because LinkedIn thinks these guys talk, they're friends. It's really simple stuff, but that's what happens. And that was Sophie. Oh. Last year? Uh, yeah. Last year. Good video. 
Really good video, that was. And, she's, and this is, it's, it's really important, this, because look at the numbers that she's got. So she started to get 57 likes, 24 comments on this video. And at the time, you were, this was your kind of first foray into LinkedIn, wasn't it? You weren't really doing a lot. But you put yourself out there, made a video, stuck it up there, and started to get engagement on it, which was really, really cool. Um, then you can start posting your stuff. So we've gone connect with loads and loads of people. And then we've said start engaging with the content that they're putting out. And the third rule with LinkedIn is then start posting your stuff. I want to tell you this story. This was the per first post um, from my daughter, Gemma, who's now studying at the University of Brighton. It's the most boring post on the planet, as you can see. She's studying architecture at the University of Brighton. Um, and this was her first post. Um, and it was a set of architectural drawings uh, for a bus shelter. So it's not the most engaging of content. And yet, the result of this post was a ton of engagement because she'd followed the two first rules. She'd started to connect with a load of people and she'd started to engage with their content. So when she posted, in her world, this went viral because it, everybody saw it. Every one of her connections saw it. And she was, she was connected with some serious individuals who run architectural practices in Brighton and in London, the areas in which she wanted to go and work. So she had, a, I can't remember the numbers now, and I wish I'd put them up there, but it went, it went crazy, this post. Uh, and mostly from people just saying, brilliant, well done, what a journey you're about to go. If you need any support and any advice, then just come to me and, and ask. Uh, and then the most surprising thing happened with this post because she immediately then got offered a summer intern. This is year first year at university and getting intern work is really, really tough. And so as a result of this post, she was offered summer intern work straight away, which was crazy. Um, so this is her, please, if you get LinkedIn, do not connect with her because she hates it when that happens and she always uh, complains at me. By all means, com um, connect with me, but please don't connect with her because she doesn't like it. Um, so she's now, you can see her numbers. So she's so, and actually just talking about this, so she's put a, 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 a she's a bit of a creative, my daughter, so she's put a kind of creative photo up there. She's done something with the top banner just to make it a little bit more attractive. She's told people who she is, where she's studying, and, and, she's, and this is the activity that she started to, to now do. But she's already built up about 1,600 connections at the point at which she started to post. So as soon as that post went up, all these 1,600 connections got it. And they were, they were connections that she targeted specifically for the work that she wanted to do in the future. Um, what happened next was actually crazy. And this has literally just happened within the last few weeks. Um, she was talking to a, a guy on LinkedIn because um, she wants to reach, she's doing um, architecture and internal um, architecture and that kind of stuff. Um, and she wants to work in TV and set production, set design and all this sort of stuff. So she was talking to this chap on LinkedIn, uh, connecting with him and he said, oh, that's great. He said, I work on Silent Witness and Luther. Do you want to come and work for us in the studios in the summer? So she's got another piece of intern work, again, in the industry in which she wants to work in just because she connected and started engaging and talking to people on LinkedIn. So that is... Super crazy and super exciting for her. I was, I was amazed, actually. One of my favourite programmes, that's Silent Witness. Um, so, you guys are getting really good at this as well. So, so, I think since this talk last year that I did with the, the old um, sixth form group, um, you started to get really proactive and started to push out quite a lot of content. Is that one of yours? <laughs> Is that your face? <laughs> so, I just... Put a load of random stuff up there that I found. So, um, so you guys have got really proactive and you've started to put out your own content. And it's, oh, where's my video? It's, my video's gone. So, um, so I'm, really, I'm really pleased with that because um, it just, it, you, this, this school and as a result of the talk I did last year have got, really hooked on LinkedIn and started to engage with a load of low people, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and so, uh, we're not going to get it. Oh. I've got this really good video that I wanted to show you that we, we put out this week that um, I was actually... It, it, do you know what, Becky, actually, in some ways, I'm actually quite grateful it's not up there. No, because, I want it up there. <laughs> So I put out this video this week, which was a bit of an um, emotional one for me. Um, and 
I was less embarrassed about publishing it on LinkedIn than I am actually about showing it to you guys. Um, it went viral, it's still going viral now, so it's up to about half a million views across New York and London and Australia and all the rest of it. Um, and it's had something like 14,000 likes on this video, which is just mental for LinkedIn. Um, and now is it gone? Okay. And it was one, I'll just tell you very briefly about it then. So uh, basically what I, I, I this, the opening of this video is saying I have no friends. Um, so as a 52-year-old man who's devoted his life to career and family and all that sort of stuff, I find myself at a stage in life where I've got no close friends. And so I put this video out that just basically said that. I made it all emotional and all the rest of it. And it went and it's gone completely crazy all over LinkedIn. And um, so, and the point of wanting to show you that video was that you do not have to be stuffy and boring on LinkedIn. You can, you can share your story. And actually, the more you share your individual personal story about who you are, what you love, what you want to do in the future, the more people are going to love you for it, the more engagement you're going to get on the stuff that you put out on LinkedIn. And actually, the more opportunities that will come your way. And I'll tell you this, and this is going to sound really mercenary, but we put out a lot of video content. We make it very personal. And we do it for that reason, because we want to create engagement and we want people to, to, to look at our stuff and like us. But what happens is that it turns into business. So as a result of putting out a video saying, hey guys, I'm 52 and I've got no friends, we won three new clients on the back of that. So it's a very difficult concept to get through people's heads that you have to go onto LinkedIn and just say, oh, this is what I do and you know, this is what I'm all about. You don't, you have to tell people your story, make it heartfelt, make it genuine, make it authentic, and people will come and buy from you. Or in your case, people will come and offer you jobs in the future or give you opportunities. So, um, so I've told you a bit about LinkedIn. I've told you a little bit about the, the power of it. You're all on, over Instagram and Snapchat. Some of you are on LinkedIn. Have I been successful? Who's going to go home after this and think, do you know what, I need to get my LinkedIn profile set up? Have I converted the room? Oh, come on, there must be more people than that. I've still got some work to do, Becky. I've still got some work. <laughs> so, um, if, if it's okay, I'm a little bit early. So, has anybody got any questions then about LinkedIn that you want to ask? It is free, yes. So there are multiple, LinkedIn make a lot of money off the paid for side of their business. That, that is majority, their money comes from people like us, so we have to pay for recruiter packages on LinkedIn, which do cost a lot of money. Um, but for everybody else, it is, you can get premium accounts, but I don't really recommend them. They are, it is free, to be honest with you, so, yeah. Anyone else got any questions? What about, yeah, hey. So, um, you, can, you can probably get, uh, you can probably get 100 connections in a day, just, just literally by, it's, it, what you've got to be very careful about is targeting who you want to connect with. So, um, so, you've got to go through the search process, identify the people like Becky, for example. So, in her case, I'd be putting up things like people who've got the, tit the job title of managing director, who live in or work in Kent. Um, and are in the industry that is marketing and advertising. And those, just those three search criteria will bring you up a whole list of people, and then I would just go through that process of looking at each one. You'll find that some of them are managing directors of their own business, and they are literally on their own. There's one employee, for example, so maybe not worth it. Uh, but when you've got agencies that are 20, 30, 40, 50 strong, or if you're going into London, 200, 300, 400 people, then absolutely, little personal message, this is who I am. Sell the hell out of the fact that you're a student. I can't I cannot stress enough how that is a massive advantage. You think it's a disadvantage at the moment. It really, really isn't. They want to build up this pipeline. So, yeah, do that little search. Start connecting. Send personal messages through. And you, you can... And, and in all honesty, I said this to Gemma when she started to do this as well. Just do half an hour a day on it and start to, to target those people and build up those connections. And very, very quickly, you'll start to get... She, she probably got up to 1,600 in... I don't know, three, four months. She's not done any for ages now because she's just buried in work. But yeah, not that long, really. And it's not like Instagram. You're not having to build up millions and millions and millions. It's very specific, very targeted, and you've got to think about, what do I want to do in the future? If you want to do game design, then go find the people that run game design companies. If you want to do digital marketing, find the Beckys of the world. If you want to do brand market, yeah, all those, whatever it is, techie stuff, um, then find the guys that run web design agencies. Um, just be very, very specific in your targeting. And if you don't know yet what you want to do, widen that out. 
and just go target industry sectors uh, that you might be interested in the future and start connecting with those people. Yes. Uh, so, so LinkedIn's a global, you can connect with people all over the world, all over the world. I mean, the post that we put up yesterday when we had about 12,000 people in New York watch it and Sydney, and it's so funny when you do and you get a viral post because you literally, two o'clock arrived yesterday afternoon and we knew New York, New York was coming on stream and suddenly you see this massive upsurge as a result of the post because New York's on stream and then overnight you wake up and you find you've got another four and a half thousand likes on a post because Australia's been awake all night. So yeah, it's completely global. I think there are something like six, uh, mm, 630 million people across the globe, I think, are on LinkedIn, so it's massive. And it's changing massively. It, I have to confess, this used to be quite a stuffy old site, but Microsoft bought it a couple of years ago. There's a ton of money being invested in it, and this is a platform that is, is on the way up, no doubt about it. Any other questions? No? Oh, no. Yes? <laughs> Yes, of course I can. Uh, you learn shitloads of stuff. <laughs> it's, it's basically because people post stuff all the time. So they're, as well as the, the, the news feed, people are producing white papers and articles and all sorts of stuff. So if you want to go and investigate uh, a particular subject, you will find this stuff has been put on LinkedIn by people. They'll have produced their own content on it and it'll be out there. So it, it's a massive plethora of information that you want to go and find as well. If you're a student as well, the, I said this to Jen when she started at Brighton, actually. You know, if you get stuck on something, just post it on LinkedIn because you're going to have millions of ex-students that have gone through an architecture degree and they're going to be, they're going to be giving you the answers or helping you out. So it's a massive support network, massive knowledge base, and it's the opportunity to really sort of profile yourself, build personal brand for your, for your future. I am done. So